In my life, the last 50 years, it's been about wanting to tell people what really happened. I did it because it was the right thing to do at that point in time. Simple as that. It was a time for me to take a stand, and I took it at all costs. It's mind-boggling. I mean, how do you do that? One day we were football players, the next day we were scum of the earth. That always was there, that albatross around your neck. You wanted the black 14. In the late 1960s, the University of Wyoming was a football powerhouse. The Cowboys won 27 out of 32 games were ranked sixth in the country following a trip to the Sugar Bowl and won three straight conference titles. By 1969, some thought Wyoming had its best squad ever. I think a lot of people felt like Wyoming could go undefeated. I think the feeling at the time was that Wyoming was as good as anybody in the country, and I think the feeling was the sky was the limit. On a campus in Laramie that was mostly white, in a decade when many college teams were all white, the Cowboys roster included 14 black players. They were led by one of Wyoming's most beloved public figures, head coach Lloyd Eaton. Take a series there, then take a series out here. Up that every night. Yeah. Coach Eaton was a very uh, militaristic-minded guy. He was very regimented in his thinking, very much of an authoritarian. He was a little bit of a hard ass. With discipline and a roster full of pro prospects, the Cowboys won their first four games in 1969. Everything was great. Everything was great. And then we're about to enter the BYU game. Brigham Young University, supported by the Mormon Church, had become a target for boycotts and student protests. The issue? rules within the church that denied priesthood to African Americans. Some of Wyoming's black players said that treatment had extended to the football field a year earlier in the form of cheap shots, slurs, and bigotry. On the way into the locker room, there was a picture of a gorilla and a black man. As soon as we walked off the field at BYU, the sprinklers came on. Hey, did you guys see the headline? BYU washes evil off the field. Cleansing the ground because blacks had played on it. What? Really? Wyoming's Black Student Alliance planned to protest the Mormon church policy before the BYU game in Laramie. The black players supported that protest, but some wanted to make another statement. Believe what you want to believe, but just don't bring it onto the playing field. It was how we were being treated as individuals, making someone second class. Perhaps we could come up with a black armband. Maybe we can put a 14 on it, because there were 14 of us. This issue had to do with black and white. This issue had to do with oppression. Keep in mind, we were in the 60s. You know, civil rights was huge. It was a time to take a stand. I don't want to be defined by my color. I want to be defined by, as Martin Luther King said, the content of my character. OK, we need to talk to the coach about this. And the rest at that point uh, is history. A day before the BYU game, wearing their black armbands, Wyoming's 14 black players walked into the field house with a question for their coach. We were going to ask him, would it be all right to wear black armbands? We thought the platform that would be appropriate to do that would be at that game. Take a seat. He'll be with you in a moment. Mm, this might not go too well. He walks in. Coach Eaton said, I can save you gentlemen a lot of time and trouble. You know, gentlemen, you're no longer Wyoming Cowboys. As of now, you're all through. You no longer are a member of the Wyoming football team. My heart just dropped all the way to the bottom. Stunned. Silence. Every time someone tried to say something, but, but, shut up! Gentlemen, we'll just save a lot of time and a lot of breath 
because you are no longer on this football team. And he told us that, well, I guess now you fellas can go on Negro relief or colored relief. And that we were saving the taxpayers a lot of money because we were all off scholarships second semester. Well, you know better than to test me, you know, like he's really God. He said, most of you come from split homes and broken families and don't know who your father is. Disparaging remarks regarding race immediately? We were going over and the consensus was, if he did not like it, we would not wear them. We were kicked off of something we thought about doing. Really? Undefeated, 12th in the country, we're asking a question. It was very convenient for the school as well as the coaches to say, we broke a rule. There was no rule. That, that's true. There was no rule until Beaton says, well, you violated my rule. What rule? We were in shock, I think. You have mixed emotions, OK? Uh, I think you have empathy for them. Uh, but another perspective asks, you know, why now? You know, we have a good thing going. And I don't think they really thought that this was going to be the end result. The next day, Wyoming took the field without its 14 black players, six of whom were starters. The Cowboys defeated BYU 40 to seven. Outside the stadium, protesters spoke out against Coach Eaton's ruling as the black players were denied their appeal to play again that season. The players are suspended for the balance of this football season. They're suspended on the basis that they refused to play in the last BYU game without wearing black armbands. This is supposed to be the equality state, not the football state. Rules have been set up. We just did not want our young men sidetracked onto things that uh, did not pertain to the reason that they were in college. I didn't sign any papers that said I had to adhere to any uh, policies or be subjected to anything that dealt with my civil rights. The dispute remains unsettled. Neither the coach nor the blacks will back down. The majority of the state of Wyoming was angry at them. These 14 guys were damaging uh, our most prized commodity. I don't think that he's a racist or just because they were Negroes they got kicked off the team. It's a small minority and it's a shame that it's made, blown up into such big proportions. They were waving the Confederate flag, chanting. Some of the guys were getting phone calls threats on their lives. It was ugly. A sad situation that was uh, poor and not good for uh, a lot of people in a lot of ways. Even in Marlboro country, you cannot hold back the racial revolution. The next week, fans displayed armbands of their own to show support for Coach Eaton. The visitors from San Jose State showed their support for the group now labeled the Black 14. I saw armbands. Now, how unreal is that? The very thing that Eaton was trying to keep us from doing, they showed their support. It was huge. Wyoming's record remained unblemished today, except for the performance outside the stadium, where nobody won. But on the field, the Cowboys wouldn't win again. They were outscored 129 to 50 over the next four games, finishing the season with six wins and four losses. And then the roof fell in. Wyoming football went all the way down. Down, down, down. One game they won the next year, and Eaton was gone. It was six years before Wyoming would have its next winning season and qualify for a bowl game. 1969 was a lasting stain on the program and a lifelong load to carry for the Black 14. It was a stigma that stuck with us for a long time. It was. You were part of Black 14, I mean, going to an interview for a job, that was a mark against you. We were blackballed. We were radioactive. Nobody wanted us at all. Back then, we would look at just as they look at Kaepernick now. Our message was misconstrued. Misinformation, misunderstandings, the same thing is going on. Too often things go awry and they go crazy without us asking 
The question, well, why? We're supposed to learn from history, and we don't. Uh, it, it continues to happen, and this is just a great illustration of that. And what we were fighting for then is true now. You fight for your rights, we fight for what's right.